All right, so let's talk about flotation. Flotation is a major application of Archimedes' principle, and it's very different from just the simple idea of buoyancy, because when you have flotation, you always have the buoyant force equaling the weight. And that's true for a very simple reason. If something's floating, then its weight got to be canceled by the buoyant force. And remember what the buoyant force is. It's just that net force that the fluid puts on the solid when you try to immerse it in the fluid. All right. So when we have a floating object, the amount of volume that's displaced is always going to be less than the total volume of the solid. Because if it was equal, then the solid would be entirely immersed and I wouldn't be correct in calling it floating. And there's no way in which that I, I could displace a greater amount of volume than the volume of the solid. I mean, the solid's not kind of carrying air with it, you know, and if it was, then I would call that air part of the solid too. I don't know. Anyway, so the volume displaced must always be less than the total volume of the solid. Okay. So, Flotation problems usually are asking one of two things. What's the fraction of the volume that is submerged? Or what's the fraction of the volume that is visible? All right, so let's look at a sample problem. What fraction of the volume of an iceberg is visible above the ocean water? All right, now in order to solve this problem, we're going to use that ratio idea that we've seen be before, but we can derive it again here. So we're going to say the buoyant force divided by the weight, which of course, buoyant force has to equal the weight, so this ratio got to be 1, right? So the buoyant force divided by the weight will be the density of the fluid volume displaced times gravity divided by the density of the solid, the total volume, times gravity. And that gives us a very, very, very important relationship that we can always use when something is floating, as long as it's a uh, uniform substance. We have that the density of the fluid divided by the density of the solid is equal to the total volume over the volume displaced. So that means that the ratio of volume displaced to volume is the same as the ratio of the density of the solid to the density of the fluid, just by flipping that guy upside down. All right, well, I know the density of ice. It's 917 kilograms per cubic meter. For the density of the fluid, we'll go ahead and use ocean water rather than pure water because it's a little bit different. It's 1025. All right. Now, this is going to be the fraction that is displaced. So that's the fraction underneath. But I didn't want the fraction underneath. I wanted the part that was visible above. So we'll say, well, geez, the part that's visible above plus the part that's not visible that's beneath, that's got to be one. So that means that the answer the volume visible divided by the total volume got to be equal to 1 minus density of the solid over density of the fluid. And it turns out, if you plug those numbers into a calculator, that you'll get something like 10.6%. So that when you're driving your uh, ocean liner through the Arctic Circle and you see an iceberg and you say, well, geez, that's a pretty big iceberg, you should keep in mind that about 89.4% of that iceberg you can't see. All right, so there's one thing. Let's go ahead and look at the next one. We've got a raft, and it's 2.5 meters by 1 meter by 20 centimeters. Okay, so that's giving us the volume of the raft. And the weight of the raft is 30 newtons. Now I've got an 800 newton person who's going to go ahead and lay on that raft, and I want to know how many centimeters of the raft are visible above the surface after I've got this person laying down on the raft, right? And then after that, I want to know what's the maximum weight that the raft can support without sinking. All right, let's see how this goes. 
So we've got, we've got our 800 Newton person and we've got our 30 Newton raft. So that means the buoyant force, remember the buoyant force with flotation always equals the total weight. It has to. So this is going to be 830 Newtons. The weight of the person plus the weight of the raft. All right. F buoyant is always equal to the density of the fluid times the volume displaced times gravity. So now I can just get the volume displaced. The volume displaced will be 830 Newtons divided by the density of the fluid, which we'll take to be water, times acceleration due to gravity, which of course is 9.8, like it always is. So when we do this division, we'll end up with um, 0.0847 cubic meters. So that's how much of the volume of the raft is displaced by or is displacing the water, is actually underneath the water, right? But we want to know what height, how many centimeters of the raft, all right? Well, we got to divide by the cross-sectional area of the raft. So the raft looks something like this, right? Where this is one meter, this is 2.5 meters, and this distance right here was 20 centimeters, okay? So if we want to know how much how many centimeters of the raft are under the water, then we got to take the volume that's under the water and divide by this cross-sectional area, 2.5 meters by 1 meter. So we'll divide by 2.5 square meters and we'll have height displaced. When we do that division, we end up with 3.4 centimeters. So therefore, height visible, well, most of it's visible. 16.6 centimeters of the raft are visible above the water when you've got this 800 Newton person laying on it. All right, what about the maximum weight that this raft can support? Well, at maximum, the raft is going to go all the way down so that 20 centimeters will be displaced. So that means that my weight, mg, will have to equal the density of the fluid times the whole volume of the raft, because now it's all the way submerged, right? Because this is a maximum, times g. And of course, we can do that, 10 to the third kilograms per cubic meter. The whole volume is nothing more than 2.5 times one times, am I gonna multiply by 20? No, remember, it's gotta be SI units, so I have to express that in terms of meters. So it'd be 0.2, so it'll be, 2.5 times 0.2 cubic meters times 9.8 meters per second squared. Now, when you multiply all this out, you'll end up with 4,900 Newtons. Now, of course, 30 Newtons of that is the weight of the raft. So that means that 4,870 Newtons, which is a huge amount of weight, can be supported by this raft. All right, so that's the way that that problem goes. Now, I wanted to do one other problem that's just kind of a qualitative idea of the way that these things work. I really like these problems because they make you think about it, but they're, they don't have any numbers in them at all. You're just kind of looking at the way that it works. So let's say that we've got this raft right here, and we're going to do something a little bit different with it. We're going to take this raft, and we're going to put a lead ball on top of it. And we're going to ask what happens to the level of water. Well, if we put that lead ball on top of the raft, that lead ball's weight is adding to the weight of the raft. But we said that the buoyant force has to equal the weight, right? It's still floating. So what that means is that this thing is going to displace more water. It's going to go down a little bit further. And that's going to cause the water level to go up a little bit. And that's because the raft is now displacing its own weight plus the weight of the lead ball. All right. Now, what happens if we then take this lead ball 
and we drop it to the bottom of the pool. And we want to know now, does the water level go up, go down, or remain the same? Now, you could go through and try to put in numbers and do all that. That would be a lot of work. So let's just think about it in a really straightforward way. When the lead was on top of the raft, it was part of a floating object. And that means that it was displacing an amount of water equal to its own weight. But now when I take that ball and I drop it into the pool so that it goes all the way down to the bottom, now it's only displacing its own volume. Since the density of lead is greater than the density of water, when it's displacing its own volume, it's not displacing as much water as when it's displacing its own weight. And that means that the water level will go down when I take the lead and I drop it into the water because it's not displacing as much. All right, that's flotation.